Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, August 1st, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And we got a second already exploited, so a zero-day vulnerability from Ivanti targeting its endpoint manager mobile core. Remember, Avanti just uh, patched the uh, unauthenticated API access vulnerability CVE 2023-35078. This new vulnerability CVE 2023-35081 was apparently used in conjunction with this authentication bypass vulnerability. After the attacker did have access to the system as an administrator, this second vulnerability was then used to execute arbitrary shell commands and also write arbitrary files to the system. Great way, of course, to get additional persistence on the system and uh, something that you need to be aware of if you are performing instant response on a compromised Imanti Endpoint Manager Mobile. Patches are available, but the real impact here is for incident response. And then we have new malware that appears to be targeting Redis data stores. Uh, Redis, sometimes also called a NoSQL uh, database, has an interesting replication feature. And the way this is exploited here is that the attacker essentially sets up a Redis data store and then uses the slave off command on the vulnerable server in order to make it replicate the content from the malicious server. This of course already kind of requires a bad configuration here where you are exposing your Redis store and allow commands like this to be run in your Redis instance. But once of course you're compromised like this, then the attacker can do whatever they want as in this case, upload additional modules to, for example, include a crypto coin miner or features like reverse shells. Also interesting here, the particular malware is not just written in Rust, but also comes as an ELF and a PE binary. So it should run on Linux as well as on Windows, something that we occasionally see, but is still not very common. This malware also contains a peer-to-peer botnet for command and control. Given that this particular malware does require a significant misconfiguration of the server and uses a relatively well-known method to compromise these servers, I would expect that any affected server is infected by a multiple piece of malware at this point and this may also cause some of the confusion between for example Palo Alto's write-up and the blog post by Kate over it actually states that uh, they aren't really sure how the initial infection happens I will include uh, links uh, to both write-ups in the show notes And the Google security blog has an article summarizing some of the Android zero days that they saw in 2022. Total of 41 in the wild zero days that they detected. Couple interesting things here, sort of highlights from the report. One is that even Google here is again pointing out that within the Android ecosystem, there can be substantial delays to actually get patches for a particular device. So even end days are function like zero days as Google puts it here. Also, attackers are moving away from the browser, meaning that they're looking for exploits that do not require any user interaction. Google also states that some of the mitigation techniques that were implemented in the browser are making the browser a less attractive target. Finally, uh, there is a 40% overlap in vulnerabilities, meaning that uh, 40% of the zero days discovered are variants of previously reported vulnerabilities, meaning in other words, that the initial patch was not sufficient. And typically more sophisticated printers had issues in the past with hard disks being built into the printers that may in some cases still contain some documents that were printed on the printer in the past. Canon now uh, did uh, publish an advisory and actually kind of interesting that they bothered with that. I think it's a good thing, but it targets more of the consumer devices and less uh, hard disks 
in these consumer devices, but other settings that may be stored in the device, like in particular Wi-Fi settings. They highly recommend resetting the device if you, for example, bring it in for repair or in particular if you are selling the device as it may otherwise expose your Wi-Fi password. And reading the advisory, it also appears that some of these settings are not necessarily reset when you're just resetting LAN settings. They, for example, do recommend that you enable the wireless LAN and then reset the LAN setting one more time. So actually have to reset twice, which may not necessarily be intuitive. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.